Good morning and welcome to my study here in the basement of my house where I'm uh, recording videos and uh, uh, posting them on my video blog. My name is Lars Herklan and I'm recording this um, video number two in a series that I've called Don't Be Afraid. Now what I'm looking at is that uh, we don't have to fear we don't have to be anxious. We don't have to worry about our lives because God will take care of us. Our text is found in Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 34. And uh, video number one that uh, we already have recorded, and hopefully you've seen it. If you haven't, I suggest you, you, you look at it. Part one is verses 22 uh, through 24. Part two is verses 25 through 31. Part three is verses 32 through 34. I'm trying to keep my tongue straight there as I'm saying all those numbers. Now, uh, this coincides, or I should say, it's basically the same that we read in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1 and out the chapter. Uh, there Jesus is also talking about fear, that we should not worry, consider the lilies and all these things. Uh, but that was early in his uh, ministry, just after he started probably his first big sermon, as he did the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, that starts at uh, Matthew chapter 5. But this uh, in Luke chapter 12 is just a few months before the cross. And uh, we assume that this being such a, an important uh, uh, thing that he might have preached it many times to many different people uh, because it is important. Now, I'm working from a six-point outline, and uh, the outline is as follows. Number one, worry fails to understand divine priority. Two, worry fails to understand divine provision. Three, worry fails to understand divine privilege. Four, worry fails to understand divine preference. Five, worry fails to understand divine paternity. And number six, final point, where he fails to understand divine pleasure. Now, what I'm trying to say here that I believe that Jesus also is saying is that uh, peace and joy can be found right here, right now. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious. We don't have to fear. And it's possible to rise above all these things. And we are supposed to get to that place that the Bible calls the peace that passeth all understanding. Now, there are two kinds of fear that uh, are mentioned in the first video. You have physical fear, which is fear of physical things. Then you have spiritual fear, which is fear of spiritual things. Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, but it's unnecessary to have any fears at all because God knows what we need and he wants to give us what we need and even more and worry is a result of two things I think I mentioned this in the previous video but uh, let me do this uh, here in the introduction uh, there are two things uh, that result results in worry now the first is ignorance and the other is doubt. Now, ignorance could be anyone's fault. It could be that you have not uh, done what you need to get to know God as well as you should. You don't know God as well as you should. It could be your own fault. It could be that uh, whoever has been teaching you and training you after you got saved has not done a proper job. Um, hard to say for uh, from my point of view but number two doubt is definitely our fault doubt lack of faith lack of trust is 
a sin. Uh, if we know God, we know what he's able to do, we know what he's capable to do, we know his promises to us. If we then doubt and we, we don't trust that God will deliver on these things, then that is a sin. And we need to understand God. If you took the book of Psalms and you started at Psalm 1 and you read all the way through Psalm 150, you get a pretty good uh, understanding of who God is. Maybe you want to make a few cross-references here and there uh, as you go through the, the book of Psalms, but so, the book of Psalms actually uh, portrays God uh, quite well. But let me um, look at these, uh, first these two points that um, we uh, we discussed in, in the first video. Now, main point number one is Worry is a failure to understand divine priority. We read verses 22 and 23. And we found that uh, God didn't just create you to survive, to fight for your food like an animal. Uh, your life is more than these physical needs. And God will take care of your physical needs so that you can focus on spiritual things. So we can focus on living our spiritual lives and fulfill God's purpose in our lives. That's what we are supposed to concentrate on, not concentrate on, on whether we have enough food or, or clothing. Uh, number two was worry is a failure to understand divine provision. That was verse number 24. And this is where God is giving his pledge to sustain you. Now he says, Jesus says, that God feeds the birds. He feeds all the animals. Why would he not feed you? Why would he not make sure that you have enough food? Because you are more important than the birds. Uh, birds don't go to to heaven. They don't have a they don't have a, a, a soul that needs saving. Uh, but we, as born again Christians, we have an important job to do. And if God feeds the birds, why wouldn't He take care of the needs of uh, of us? who believes in, in God and that is trying to do his will on the earth. So that was point number one and point number two that we discussed in video number one. Now we come to point number three. And point number three says, Worry is the failure to understand divine privilege. Let me read verse 25 and verse 26. And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit. If ye then not, sorry, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? So, Jesus is saying, who can add to his life? And when he's, he's talking about one cubit, now, uh, one cubit is the length from uh, from the tip of the elbow till the tip of the fingers. And normally it's uh, considered to be about 18 inches. Now, obviously, this is not something that he means literally. This is obviously a metaphorical statement. Uh, I mean, think about it. If you suddenly grew and you were 18 inches taller... What would that profit you? He's obviously talking to the length of his life. I mean, uh, you can't add to your life. God has given you a specific amount of time to live, and that is what you got. You can't add to your life beyond the time that God has given you. It's not how long we live, but it, it's how we live. Now, we want to live healthier lives so that we can live longer today we have like a health mania and everybody is all uh, concerned about uh, training and uh, exercising 
and um, this is not uh, in in itself training is not uh, nothing bad i mean it's not wrong to take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Bible says that uh, the Holy Spirit dwells within us and he calls, the, he calls our bodies the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's not wrong to take care of our temples in that way, but it is wrong to be totally absorbed, absorbed about it. If you put that, that's more important than uh, to please God or to do God's will then you have a problem. Now, it's good to be disciplined. It's good to retain your physical strength. And the, in our lives, we, we, we talk about stewardship. I know I've mentioned this before in other videos, but uh, stewardship is how we, um, how we use the uh, abilities and the materialistic things and everything that we, we have. And our bodies is also... Um, something that we we have to be stewards of because uh, we need to stay reasonably healthy or else god won't be able to use us now but if you worry about your life you will most likely get sick now there's something called psychosomatic uh, illnesses and that's when you worry and uh, worry a lot and are, are anxious about a lot of things then then this tends to give you pains different places in your body and it's not good it will not lengthen your life shortly uh, surely it will actually shorten your life uh, some might die prematurely because of too much worry and too much anxiety uh, but god is the one that decides how long we are to live and you know we say uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, um, that is how we need to to look at things. It is God that is in control. It is not us. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, let me read a few verses uh, there from verse 25. So, Paul is saying that it is important to uh, to stay on target. Uh, verse 25 in 1 Corinthians 9. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself my, uh, should be a castaway. Uh, in other words, put on a shelf. But uh, um, so he's saying that he, he keeps his, his body in uh, subjection uh, and he, he runs the race. But the race that uh, Paul is running is, uh, is a spiritual race. He is uh, not trying to get a physical crown because he's been uh, winning a track and field competition. He is uh, trying to to win uh, treasures in, in heaven that will be good. And he can collect after this life here on, on earth. But um, let me also read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verses 7 through 8. <clears throat> These are some uh, verses that uh, are, are quite familiar to, to many. But, verse 7, Refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. It says we should exercise to godliness. We should be doing, as a matter of fact, spiritual exercises. And verse 8, For bodily exercise profiteth little but godliness is profitable unto all things having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come now it says bodily exercise profiteth little it doesn't say that it doesn't profit at all it is good to be fit it is good to be healthy there's no doubt about it but we only have these physical bodies for a short time 
Paul is more concerned about what is uh, more profitable uh, for all things, and that is eternal things. So, spiritual things are much more important than physical things. As long as we live according to the Lord's will, <clears throat> pardon me, he will sustain us to the end. That is a promise from God. Right. Now, let us go to point number four. Worry is a failure to understand divine preference. Now we're back in Luke chapter 12, and I will read verses 27 through uh, 29. <clears throat> 27 through 29. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not array arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Okay, so you know, as we as we uh, we live in modern days, we hear about uh, evolution that we are merely animals, and uh, as animals, we have to fight for our food. We have to fight for our survival. It's survival of the fittest, and uh, this is the the secular world that tells us these things. But um, uh, Christians, we are we are not here to fight over the food. We're here to glorify God. Um, now. When we come to verse number 27, we, we turn from the subject of food and we go over to the subject of clothing. Um, so, uh, food is nourishment of the body and clothing is protection of the body. So, we're still talking about physical things here. And when Jesus is talking here, he's talking to his children and he's uh, he's saying in verse number 27 cons consider the lilies the crinon the lilies and when you come to verse 28 he says uh, that uh, god he clothes the grass the cortos which is grass but also used about flowers now if you put these uh, verses together, he's actually seems to be talking about wild flowers, you know, that uh, uh, <clears throat> you consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spin not. Yet I said unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. You know, um, I'd like to go to First Peter and read. A verse there from chapter 1, verse 24. Um, uh, and this is talking about grass. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. So uh, Peter is here stressing, you know, about flowers and grass. You know, it's... It's unimportant, basically, is what he's saying. And the, the, the flowers, although they're wildflowers or if they're lilies or whatever they are, they all fade away. They all wither away and they're not going to live forever. Um, Peter was actually quoting Isaiah here. But uh, uh, anyway, the, the flowers and the grass, they, they don't toil. They don't work hard. They don't sweat that's what the word uh, toil means it, it means working till you get a sweat so it's working hard and they don't spin the the wildflowers don't do any of these things and it's funny if you take a petal and you put it under a microscope you see how amazingly fine the the texture of uh, a petal is 
if you take a piece of cloth and put it under a microscope, you see that everything is rough. You see the roughness and is not as delicate as a piece of a flower or a piece of grass. And that's then God says, you know, or Jesus says, not even Solomon was dressed as one of these. Now, if you wonder how well Solomon was dressed, I suggest that you read First Kings 10 uh, and Second Chronicles 9. You know, he was a very rich man, King Solomon, and he had the finest garments. You read these chapters and you see how rich he was, and he had the finest garments, but not even Solomon's garments were as nice as and as intricate as when you look through a microscope and look at a petal. And flowers, as I say, they live and they die and they, they do that rather quickly. Uh, and they don't really have, the only testimony they have to God is that uh, the pretty flowers is that uh, God has created them. Um, but um, in verse 28, you know, Jesus says, how much more will he dress you? If he dresses the flowers, will he not dress you? Now, he's talking here in, in verse 28. Uh, if then God shall clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Now, the, the bit about cast into the oven is, is kind of a uh, cultural uh, uh, curiosity because uh, uh, in, in these days in the Middle East, they often cooked things in a clay oven. And what they did was they used grass to regulate, regulate the temperature on, on the fire. So they would throw more grass in if they wanted it warmer. They would take less grass if they wanted it um, cooler and uh, this is something that uh, everyone understood when uh, Jesus was talking about the grass that was cast into the fire now you know Jesus is saying look how God clothes these uh, flowers you know uh, he does all this just for a flower but he, pre he prefers you he wants to cover you you are the bride of his beloved son of course god wants to clothe you and he says oh ye of little faith and this is something that we read many times in the bible oh ye of little faith why do you panic there is something here that you don't understand you know if he uh, called you he will not let you drown. He will do not let you starve. He will not let you go naked. He will take care of you. So you have these important things in life, these physical things. He will take care of it. So it's like, like God is saying to, to man, why don't you trust me? Do you not trust my knowledge? Do you not trust my wisdom? Do you not trust my compassion? Do you not trust my power? What is it about me that you don't trust? Do you think that the devil is stronger than me? And he says, O oh, ye of little faith. So he's not saying that they don't have any faith. No, this could be that this is meant for maybe not the closest disciples, but some of these disciples that uh, followed him. I wasn't quite sure if they uh, wanted to continue to follow him or if they... Uh, or if they would, if they would or they wouldn't. Uh, but it says, uh, and of course this is also fitting for the uh, the 12 apostles, he says, oh ye of little faith, and he said that in the boat as well, you know, and he said it in many places. You know, they had faith, but they only had a little faith. And the problem is that they didn't trust in God. And if we worry and we are fearsome and we are anxious, then that is the problem we have as well. If we know God and if we know his promises to us, 
Why are we not trusting him? <clears throat> you know, for the people in the Middle East, as I probably touched on this in the last video, uh, getting enough food and clothing and these things, that was their daily pursuit. It was what they were living for. It was a constant worry about life. How, where would the next meal come from? How would they be able to get new clothes now that the old ones were full of holes and ripped and torn? But God says, you should not worry about this. God wants us to have this. So, uh, that is a failure to understand divine preference. Now, let's move on to verse 30 and uh, 31. Point number five. Worry is the failure to understand divine paternity. Let me read verse uh, 30 and 31. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Probably uh, have uh, Matthew 6.33 in your head as we read that, uh, that uh, verse 31 there. Now, when I use the word paternity, paternity is a word that I've come to use lately uh, because I've heard it so many times and uh, because of that I started to use it. But uh, uh, paternity comes from the word pater. That means father. So when we talk about divine paternity, we're talking about uh, God's fatherhood. Okay, the fact that God is the father of you and me. Okay, if you are born again. Now, as I've said in many videos now, and I don't know how much I've said it in the English, but I'll just mention it. Uh, there are two families. You're either in God's family or you're in uh, the devil's family. If you haven't received Jesus as Savior, you are in the devil's family. If you have received Jesus as your Savior, you are in God's family. And this is what uh, we're talking about here. We're talking about divine paternity, that God is the Father, and we are a child of God because we have been saved by Christ. Just so, just so there's not a misunderstanding about that. Now, do you understand that God is your father? Uh, God knows that we need these things. Now, he will make provision for us. He prefers us, as I said earlier, because he is our father. Um, uh, so he's talking about here about those whose father is God. But then he talks about the nations of the world. Jesus is talking about the nations of the world. And that's that's everybody else. That's the unsaved. And the nations of the world, these unsaved people, everybody else that is not belonging to the family of God, they are eagerly seeking. They are epizeto. That means to, to seek intensely and to have a strong desire so these are people outside their kingdom if you remember in the first video i said that uh, uh, jesus was interrupted here and there and by questions from people that was in the crowd but basically in all of luke 12 before that and after that jesus is giving a lecture he's talking about the kingdom and now when he's talking about nations of the world he's back to talking about the kingdom of God, and he's talking now about those that are outside the kingdom, the nations of the world that are not part of the kingdom of God, and whose father is Satan. You can look up John eight forty four if you want. I will not. But uh, uh, these are the people that are doing vain things. And um, I said that the devil is their father, and the devil is doing evil, not evil good so it's talking about the unsaved and the unsaved have no promises have no pledges have no commitments have no guarantees from god only uh, those that are 
part of God's family have promises, pledges, commitments, and guarantees. Okay? So this is important to know. <clears throat> and then we see in verse number 30, For these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Um, there is a pattern here. Uh, now, they pursue a battle for survival. They are dead unto spiritual life. They are committed, you could say, to the physical life. And life, for those of the world, that life is a struggle. And they only live to survive. In a way, you know, like Darwin said, it's the survival of the fittest. You know, it's a, it's a hard battle. And uh, they create their own God or own gods that cannot help them. And they only reap the common gifts to mankind. And when I say the common gifts to mankind, I say, you know, like the Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. So that means that, uh, you know, even the unjust uh, is able to, to eat most of the time. And, uh, um, you know, they are able to stay alive as well, but not because they have promises of, from God that they will, uh, but just because uh, there's uh, there's some uh, common gifts to mankind that God just gives because he is a, a good God. And uh, your father, he knows that you need these physical things. He knows all about it. He has the power and he has the resources. And he is our father and he is our protector. <clears throat> and all you need is available from your father. Like I normally say, the father's pockets are deep. They're endless. He can give whatever he wants. And the key is here in verse number 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Like I say, Matthew uh, 6.33 comes into mind, but uh, uh, this is the key verse, you could say. Uh, don't focus on the spiritual things. Uh, sorry, don't focus on, this, on the physical things. Focus on the spiritual things. Focus on the, the kingdom of God, which, by the way, in these days are inside us, okay? But uh, there will be a kingdom of God in the future. But uh, we, we need to focus on spiritual things. And as Matthew 6.33 says, um, you know, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things should be added unto you. In, in 6.33, you got... All his righteousness is added to the words that we see here in Luke twelve thirty one, uh, But um, the main thing is don't focus on food and clothing or other physical things. Uh, focus on spiritual things. Focus on spiritual living. Focus on spiritual growth. And focus on the spiritual kingdom, because at the moment, this kingdom of God is spiritual. I'd like to read just a few things. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Right. Also, let me read Luke chapter 16 and verse 16. 16, 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John, since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. 
they, we press into it because we want to get into it. And it's a good thing to be in the kingdom of God. Now, way at the end of this, and this will be uh, the last verses I'll read in this video. And I'll just about to close. Psalm 37. Let me read verse 3 through 5 first. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the, in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Um, jump down to verse number 9. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Uh, verse number 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Some of these verses sound a bit familiar, don't they? Like uh, the Sermon of the Mount. And... Let me read verse 25. I mean, this is David writing this psalm. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God will take care of us because he is our father and he wants the best for us. So there you have it. This is the end of video number two, which means that there is only one point left. The point number six is worry fails to understand divine pleasure. And this is found in verses 32 through 34. But that will be in the final and third video in this series. I hope some of these uh, uh, comments and verses were of uh, help to you. Please don't worry. Please trust the Lord. He wants you to have the best. He wants you uh, to be taken care of so that you can uh, think about your spiritual life, your spiritual growth. And uh, I leave you with that thought. God be with you till we meet again.